hanging out, enjoying this beautiful Florida sunshine. Look at that building. It doesn't say where that building is, but I'm guessing it's a bank. Good morning, hello, good afternoon, depending on where you are and what, what you're doing if you're watching the replay. Um, my name is Whitney Nicely. I am a real estate broker for Whitney Buys Houses. We're in Tennessee and in Georgia. I'm also a real estate auctioneer. And this week I am on my second week of vacation in Florida. So I'm enjoying the sunshine. Look, I'll show you a palm tree. See, palm trees. We're in Florida, it's beautiful and sunshiny here. So I'm sitting in the car waiting on my mom and my brother's girlfriend to come back in and today's topic is Craigslist and I wanted to tell you that if you're not using Craigslist, I don't really care what kind of business you're in, especially in real estate, you need to be on Craigslist. Yes, I am enjoying this Florida weather. It's awesome. So what kind of ad are you going to put on Craigslist? And if a lot of people shop on Craigslist, but they forget to sell on Craigslist. And I want you to know that, I mean like a lot, most, a majority of my buyers just find me on Craigslist. They find my houses under the uh, for rent section, under the for sale section, they find them. So if you are not advertising your houses on Craigslist, you are missing a huge portion of the population that are looking for good housing, looking for sale, looking for rent, looking for rent to own. They're looking for all of it. And sometimes the people that have found me on Craigslist have turned into actual cash buyers to get a mortgage instead of rent to own or renter, renters or rentals. So you need to be on Craigslist. Um, and if y'all have a couple people that follow you on Periscope, hit that little Periscope guy and share this with your followers. Um, give me some hearts, give me some likes. Let me tell you what you need to say on Craigslist too, okay? As a realtor, I have to say in all of my marketing, all of my advertising that I am a realtor, that I am, you know, selling this house, that I'm a private investor, I'm an agent, I am doing this as a realtor. But if you're not a realtor, then you just need to say, hey, I've got this house, it's awesome, it's in this neighborhood, put pictures up. I like to put at least five pictures of each house on Craigslist. Now on my website, I'll put 20 pictures up, or however many I can. And then in the Craigslist ad at the bottom, it always says, more information and pictures available on my website. Sometimes Craigslist doesn't like that, but you can say, WhitneyBuysHouses.com and you can actually spell out the dot and sometimes that's how people get to my web website from Craigslist. Also, I found on Craigslist that people like to text. So if you don't put your cell phone number and you don't tell them to text you for more information, then they'll call. But I get a ton of texters from Craigslist. Um, my title on Craigslist, it depends on your area. But a lot of people put asterisks and they put exclamations and they put all this stuff so they stand out, but then they don't actually stand out because everybody else is putting the stars and the this and that and the others on it. So sometimes I go bold, sometimes I go all small letters. Sometimes I make it look very prim and proper and like a professional is posting it, so I don't put any of that. I put the correct capitals where they're supposed to be, I put the correct punctuation, the correct grammar, and that draws people in. Um, sometimes I'll put in my headline that I buy houses, Whitney buys houses. Um, sometimes you put call for the monthly payment, call for the down payment. Or sometimes I change it up and I put it in the post. So there's all sorts of different ways and you'll have to figure it out for your area. But Craigslist, there's money on Craigslist. It's a free site. Um, Craigslist gets their money from job postings in San Francisco and New York, I believe. So that's how they make all their money. So they don't have to charge me. They don't have to charge you. They don't have to charge most people in the world who use Craigslist because they get enough money just out of two markets. I post my houses. Good question. I post my houses every evening between six and nine. Um, this past summer, I had an auction, and I only posted it in the morning between 6 and 9. So I think any time 
any time of the day is good, but you want to think about when the majority of people are either going to work and checking Craigslist to see what happened last night, or you want to get them when they get home and they start settling in for the night. And y'all, just to be honest with you, that's when I do most of my social media posting anyway. My Instagram, my Facebook, all my stuff, I like to do it between 6 and 9 a.m. And I'd like to do it 6 and 9 p.m. I do it every day, every day. And I never do that um, renew thing. I never do that. Mine are always fresh and new. And I'll tell you why. If you're going down through the list and you just keep seeing me, keep seeing me, keep seeing me, and I'm on there every day, all day long, never miss a beat, then you know I'm serious and you know I'm steady. It also makes you say, oh my gosh, I see you all the time. What is on your website? And so then they go to the, my website. It's about consistency. Put it up every night. Put it up every morning. Put it up both times if you want to. But put it up at a regular pace and people will find you. Um, change up the headline. Sometimes I say rent to own. Sometimes I say buy it now. Sometimes, oh, I never renew. I, I never renew. I always, it's always worth the extra minute or two it takes to copy and paste that post and put a new picture up. I always put one picture of the front of the house, what they're gonna see when they drive up, and then put one interior picture. You don't have to put 20 pictures up. Direct people to your website. Let them see all the goods when they get to your website. Give them enough to hook them. It's just like dating. It's just like Tinder. It's just like, you know, everything else. Give them enough to want to fall in and find out more. So, be there. Give them enough to get their attention. Put a good picture up. Sometimes I put ugly pictures up. Because, especially if it's a fixer-upper, I'll put an ugly picture up so that they're like, Ooh, I like that. I could fix that. So play with your pictures. Put a different picture up every day because maybe you put a picture up from one angle of the house. Maybe the next day you put it up straight on from the house and then the next day you put it from a different angle. So they may have seen it and they may have not liked the first picture you put up. Put up a picture of the backyard. Maybe they like the backyard. Maybe somebody is just searching for a yard that's fenced in where their dogs would have a good time. You always put a picture of the front of the house up. They don't care what the front of the house looks like. They want to know what's in the backyard. So maybe you attract different people by different pictures of the house. Um, I always put one outside picture, one exterior picture, and one interior. I might put the outside and the kitchen, the backyard and a bathroom, the front yard and you know the back porch, or the laundry room. You can't tell what people are gonna be looking for, so put something different up every day. Same house can look completely different to different people. So again, uh, some people have joined in late. My name is Whitney Nicely. I buy houses. I'm sorry. My name is Whitney Nicely East. I keep forgetting I got married in October. I mean, I don't forget that. I forget I changed my name. Um, but if you like this, share this. Hit the little Periscope guy and share this with your people. If you're new to real estate and you have questions, send me an email. Info at WhitneyNicely.com. Uh, check out my website. I do coaching packages. WhitneyNicely.com. Um, but share this if you see it later. Share it with your audience later in the day, too. Um, but today is all about Craigslist. And I may do another scope later this afternoon more about Craigslist, how you get the money, how you answer the calls. Um, and I am going to set up a uh, seller lead sheet so that, because I also advertise on Craigslist that I buy houses. People are on there sharp shopping. People are also on there to sell. So I put it up that I, I buy houses. And a lot of times they send me their Craigslist posts and it doesn't really work. But I've bought houses off Craigslist. So if you're out there to say you buy houses on Craigslist, make sure you're saying you sell houses on Craigslist and vice versa. Um, I am a broker, so there's certain things that I have to do that the normal I buy houses or I sell houses people don't have to do. Um, that being said, I only buy for sell by owner houses. I don't buy houses that are listed and that have been listed with every other agent in town. I don't do that. But if you want to auction something and you're coming near the end of your listing, I'll be glad to look at an auction for a property that um, needs to be sold pretty quickly before it gets relisted and relisted and relisted. So um, I had a couple good questions here. If y'all have any other questions, send me an email, info at WhitneyNicely.com. And if you want to find out more about me, 
My website is WhitneyNicely.com and be sure to follow along because I do real estate daily talks every day. So again, info at WhitneyNicely.com. And I, I appreciate the hearts. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good day. I'll give you another shot of Florida since I'm on my vacation. Oh, thank you. Florida is beautiful in February, if you didn't know. And I am on my second week of vacation down here. We came for the race for the Daytona 500 yesterday, and we're staying this week, too, <laughs> because the weather's just so much nicer than it is in Tennessee and Georgia. I'm in Daytona Beach. We came for the Daytona 500, and we're still here, still hanging out. Uh, we were driving down the road earlier. I'll try to scope later and tell you what kind of real estate I'm looking at while we're here. Uh, I'm actually meeting with a realtor buddy of mine on Wednesday to go look at some condos, to go look at some stuff. Um, and I'll tell you, we were driving down the road and we've got all these high rises, okay? That's not a residential unit, but it brought up a good point that we see all these high rises on the beach side and then all these low rise, you know, old no-tail motels, right? On the non-beachy side. So I'm wondering, I'll turn around. I'm wondering if there's any of the beachside motels, because some of them are only four stories. I'm wondering if any of those are, you know, grandfathered in that you can't build anything higher than four stories on the beach side. And if that's the case, I'm thinking that I might buy one of these no-tell motels across the street from the beach and maybe put a high-rise there. What do y'all think about that? I was going to poll Instagram and see what you think. And it may be that, you know, across the street is also deemed where you can't build a 10-story. But I think there's probably a lot of people because, you know, beachside condos are what 750 to a million you probably can't find anything less than half a million but if you were across the street from the beach and yes you have to look over a four-story um, hotel but what do you think about being literally across the street from the beach having a beach view and being half a million or under I I haven't pulled the market, but I really feel like there's got to be plenty of people out there who would live across the street from the beach, same neighborhood, same zip code, same everything, same view, just look over the street. So, I'll show you what I'm talking about later. I'll scope later as we're riding down the street so you can see what I'm talking about. But I think that, I think that should be a good idea. And, you know, you got to check into the zoning, you got to check into this and that and the other, but it could also be a possibility that I could put it under contract and then assign it, you know, pitch the idea to some other investors and assign it to them so that they can build it and develop it. I am in Daytona Beach this week. I was here last week. I'm normally in Tennessee and in Georgia, in Knoxville, Tennessee, and Rome, Georgia, but I'm really thinking that that might be a absolutely fabulous idea. And we are talking about an assignment fee. Heck yeah, buddy. It's got to be a $100,000 assignment fee, right? Just to come up with the idea and get it all worked out and check on it. I don't see why not. They put, um, you know, high rises on the beach side, but they don't put them on the, across the street side. And there's got to be a reason. So I'm going to see if I can find out what that reason is today while we're shopping. My mom's in the store shopping. We just left Marshall's. I love multiplexes. And we have 19 apartment units in Tennessee. I forgot to turn my volume down so people are texting me. Um, 19 apartment units. That breaks down into three different apartment units. I love multi-units. We haven't bought anything in Georgia yet, but my husband lives in Georgia. So I live in Georgia half the time. And I'd love to buy some apartments in Georgia. So if you have any leads, you want me to look at anything, info at WhitneyNicely.com. And I'll shoot it over to Jason. That's my husband. He does the... Uh, the number crunching. <laughs> That's what he's really good at. He's really smart. He's really good at numbers. So I go out and blab around and talk around and get the deals stirred up and he checks it out and crunches the numbers and then we decide to go forward or not. 
So if you have any questions, email me info at WhitneyNicely.com. And I'm in Florida checking out real estate down here this week. I'll be back in Tennessee and Georgia next week. If you want to know about coaching, I have group coaching available for March. Uh, I've got two women signed up for it already. So I have three more spots. I only take five people every month. And we focus on sellers, how to get them, how to keep them, how to make them happy, and how to talk to them. So if you have any questions about sellers, you should definitely join group coaching. Um, it is $250 in March, $250, and that's one hour a week. I, I lead it. I've got three or four different topics to hit every week. It's one hour, Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m., and then I leave the last 15 minutes open for questions. And then I think on Wednesday, maybe Thursday, I don't know, um, we will talk. We'll have like an open deal so that everybody in the group has a chance to present their deals, talk about any kind of questions that they have. And it's only five people, so it's a very closed group. Um, that way, you know, you kind of get to know each other and you don't have to feel like you're exposed with all your new questions but a lot of times newbies have the same kind of questions so it's talking about sellers it's an hour every week Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. I record the calls um, I've got some worksheets I got some pamphlets I've got some uh, not pamphlets um, PowerPoint slides um, that will go through so you can just listen on the phone if you want to you can dial in if you want to uh, to the um, uber conference so it's, it's very fun, it's very informative. We talk about sellers for three weeks. It's just for the month of March, group coaching in March. And we talk about sellers for the first three weeks and buyers for the fourth week, for an hour. And I'll lead you through how I get sellers, exactly how I get sellers, exactly what I say to sellers. Uh, we may even do a couple practice seller calls. Residential sellers, yes. Um, most people, in multis, small multis, you can use the same speech on them. If you're talking to people with, you know, 20 units or more, it is a different speech. And when you look at small multis, you're still looking at the cap rate and the ROI, but it's not as much money usually. You know, in my market, I can get a small multi for the same as I can a house, which is awesome. So, um, share this scope with your friends. Again, hit the little Periscope guy. Share it, share it, share it. Hey, Marie, I saw you earlier. We need to get together and figure out when we're doing our one-on-one -on -one this week. So, if you have uh, a need for one-on-one, -on -one, I can do that too. Uh, and Maria is one of my one-on-one -on -one students right now. I saw her just log in. So let me know if you have any questions. Info at WhitneyNicely.com. If you want to sign up for group coaching, I still have three spots. And if Wednesdays at 9 don't work for you, then get a one-on-one -on -one coaching. Oh, good. Send me an email. Thank you. <laughs> um, get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Maria's been doing one-on-one -on -one coaching for the last month, and she's doing good. Uh, she's already in real estate, but you don't have to be in real estate to start the one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can just, you know, start one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I think for the rest of February, one-on-one -on -one coaching is three twenty-five, dollars um, but it's going to jump up in March because... I've got some other stuff that I realized I can add to it to make it better. Some worksheets, some um, seller lead sheets, different different stuff. But all of the information is WhitneyNicely.com. Um, and again, info at WhitneyNicely.com if you want to, you know, work around. If you need 15 minutes with me to decide whether you want group or decide you want one-on-one, uh, -on -one, then you can sign up for 15 minutes at $25 for 15 minutes and I'll talk to you and help guide you to see which way you want to go. Uh, one of the ladies that signed up for March's group coaching did 15 minutes with me and that's how she decided on group coaching instead of one-on-ones. So if you have any questions, info at WhitneyNicely.com and check out WhitneyNicely.com. Um, you can also check out the houses that I have, WhitneyBuysHouses.com. And I have an auction website. Um, all my auction properties go at acre.bid, A-C-R-E dot B-I-D. And I am in Atlanta. Well, I go to Rome when I go to Georgia. Oh, <laughs> y'all hear him snoring in the back? That's King Louie. Uh, he's my mom's Frenchie. <laughs> and he's our mascot. Um, but I, I go to Rome, Georgia at least once a week 
and I, my husband lives in Rome, but I, I hopped down to Atlanta. Um, I've got some friends in Atlanta, Lenise Williams, the mompreneur Esquire. Um, I go see her, try to go see her every other week or so. Oh, he's up now. I woke him up. Louise, say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. That's King Louis. I usually have Abby the Labby with me, but I'm dog crazy. And I got to tell you all that before I got Abby the Labby, I didn't care about dogs. So Abby was a rescue dog, but um, it's a French bulldog. My mom always says that I rescued Abby, but at the same time, Abby rescued me. So, hey, John, I see you just joined. Um, if you have any questions, Louie and I are going shopping. So we're, we're going to look at commercial stuff here in Florida. On Wednesday, we're going to look at residential stuff in Florida. So I'll give you one last shot of Florida. That's all I really have for today. It's not even the beach, but depending on where you are, those blue skies and sunshine and 72 degrees just might make your day. <laughs> so last week of vacation, two week vacation, and it's been fabulous. I'm definitely enjoying it. Yes, it's perfect weather. Absolutely gorgeous. Say bye, Louie. Y'all have a good day. I'll be back on later. Bye.